YouTube. It's Brian Phillips. We have a special one for you today. Pay no attention to this box. <laughs> it is not the box you're going to get, but it does give you an idea of how big it is, which is pretty cool. So we're just gonna open this up. Um, yeah, so basically when we do unboxings, usually we end up with normal packaging, but then every once in a while, you know, we'll do a UMX plane and it'll be like a white box without any print on it. That's kind of the same scenario here with early releases, sometimes this happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox this and just please forgive the packaging. It's not necessarily the way yours is gonna come. We're just gonna lay things out carefully and show you exactly what you get. <laughs> okay, so we're just being a little bit more careful than usual so we don't like lose something. And as you can see, we have a monster wing and there's something else in here. Let's find out what it is. Okay, more packaging. Okay, so now there's another, there's another chunk. <laughs> it's the fuse. Oh yeah, it's the ultra stick. And this is a one point, one meter. Yep. Okay, so I think I might need to open the other end of the box. Well, oh. wait, hold on, let's see. Well, I don't want to slide it. Slide. I can slide it, but I don't okay. want to break it. Okay. So when you guys get this, Yours is gonna be in regular packaging, like what you've come to expect. This is an E-Flight product. And yes, I know some of you are like, whatever, Brian, that's wood, it's not E-Flight. Um, yeah, it is E-Flight. And yes, E-Flight has done wood models for a long time, just not, that's not their mainstay. So, interesting enough, we're gonna see how it does. And we're gonna show you just like we always do on Brian Phillips RC. And without further ado, Looks like we've got some more pieces in here. Landing gear, a prop, a spinner. Okay, a little bag of goodies. And a manual, very nice. Oh, along with the horizontal stabilizer and uh, landing gear and vertical stabilizer and rudder. So let's see, oh, there's still something in the middle. What's in the middle? So this is a bind and fly basic, which is gonna be one of the easiest ultra sticks that have ever come out of Horizon. Mm -hmm. Because even when we did the plug and fly ultra stick not too long ago, would have been a year and a half ago, it's empty. Empty. That plane was a plug and fly, and so we had to provide our own receiver and radio system. This is gonna be a bind and fly basic, so you do have to provide your own battery. They suggest three or four ass 50C, okay? So now, 50C seems like a lot for this plane, in my opinion, but we have a 100C and a 50C, and we're just charging them both, and we're gonna see how things go. But just so you know, your packaging is not gonna look like this. It's just the way it works on this one, okay? So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and open these things up. And I'm quite curious how this is gonna open, but we're gonna find out right now. So just uh, being a little bit extra careful as we go, in fact, since this packaging is nothing like yours, maybe, nah, we'll just, we'll just show. Oh, okay. I was thinking we could just unpack it because mm. it's kind of like not the not thing. Not the thing. You know, the thing. So once we get this all undone, then we're gonna be able to closely inspect the beauty that is the Ultra Stick. Now, if you guys are new to the hobby and you're thinking, hey, I want something that's really high quality or more particularly people coming back to the hobby, I think is who we'd be speaking to here. Um, if you want balsa wood aircraft, they still exist. Um, in fact, I'm looking at one back there too, that PT-19 is another balsa wood aircraft. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I believe that one was Hangar 9. It was. So Hangar 9 still under the umbrella of Horizon, but uh, definitely takes a little bit of doing to put those models together compared to the uh, E-Flight offerings. Okay, so they just basically used some thick plastic. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, so as you can see, this thing comes with a Spectrum brushless outrunner motor, a 35, 34, 1000 kV. And then we have an ESC in here, which is an Avian, I thought it was 45. That's a 45 amp brushless three through four S. There's a little tape applied to this already, which is nice. And then there's a Velcro. 
that goes around where the battery will be received up front. So we're just gonna slide this back in. Now it is not impossible that that battery strap and some of these items will come uninstalled on yours because if you're buying this as an ARF, which would be an almost ready to fly, you're gonna have to mount the motor and all sorts of different steps. And so if you're looking through the instruction manual online, which by the way, this is a good side note, if you need an instruction manual and you can't find it, just follow our links and then scroll down a little bit. You can see there's an instruction manual. It'll say like manuals and documentation or something mm -hmm. like that. And that's a good way to get them if you're looking because sometimes when you ask a question about like, hey, which battery do you recommend all that? If we don't get back to you right away, that's a good way to get the answers quick. But generally we put a link to the plane, we put a link to the battery, we put a link to the receiver, and then we put a link to the transmitter. So like everything but the charger, the chargers, we kind of have a master list up there. Okay, so we have the instruction manual here, which is the typical E-Flight mm -hmm. high quality manual. And then we have the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. So we're gonna pop this out. Okay. These bags are super, super thick. So now I believe that this model is gonna come in similar to what you've seen from Hangar 9 in the past with like the top and bottom halves being separate and then not a complete foam box. So it'll be like the, the more earth friendly packaging, I believe. Okay, so we're gonna continue with this. Horizontal stabilizer and elevator. As you can see, it's got that cool transparent covering there, which is really nice. And it looks super cool when it glows like that. Oh, yeah. But I like that you can see through it. That's really neat. Um, okay, so we're just throwing stuff out of the way. Then we have the vertical stabilizer and rudder. Now this part, guys, is, I'm not 100% sure how yours is gonna come, but I would assume that you're gonna have to probably put this together out of a nut and bolt sack. Uh, that's the way it came to us with the Ultra Stick last time, but I don't know for a fact because we had to assemble the tail. Now the instructions do go into pretty great detail on exactly how to do all that. And so for our sake, this is gonna have to slide down in here and we'll do that here in a few minutes. But I just wanted to let you know, I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work, but we're still gonna have to make ours go. So continuing on, what's next? We got some landing gear. Mm -hmm. Obviously here, let's look at the manual since it's first at reach. Okay, very nice. So the Ultra Stick 1.1. And this does give you the regular E-Flight style instructions as well as the Hangar 9 style build instructions. You will notice they're in black and white. I was a little bummed about that. Color does help on a build like this in my opinion, but it costs a lot more to print them. So, mm -hmm. but even online it's black and white. Okay, so continuing on. So we're gonna open this up. This is a landing gear, spinner, and prop. Okay, it's a nice steel landing gear, like what we've come to expect on a model of this echelon. Nice soft tires. Hey, what do you know? Look at that. Soft-er. Oh, yeah. Soft-er. Again, not sure if you're gonna have to put that together. But my guess is not. And then there are nut certs or that's going to receive your bolts to put the landing gear on. So that should be a super easy part. And like we mentioned earlier, this is easier even still than the last ultra stick that was released. Okay. So then we have a prop here. This one's taped like a million times. They really wanted to make sure it didn't come out. Okay, so let's pop this out. I don't know what size prop this is. But it is definitely, it looks like an APC style or an ACP. It looks like, according to the manual, a 10-5E. 10-5E? Mm -hmm. okay, let's see if that's what we got. 
That's the other fun thing that we get with these early samples is sometimes the manuals have little updates that haven't actually been released. <laughs> so it's super fun. Okay. So this is a 10 5e right there. Okay. All right. So that's going to obviously be taken care of there. And then we've got a spinner and some miscellaneous hardware here, as well as a prop adapter. And this one, they stapled shut. So we're going to see, I don't know, maybe that was just the kit. I ran out of tape. Yeah. Let's go ahead and pop this open. Slide this out. All right, so we've got all our little adapters there. Got the spinner screwed together again. Not sure if yours will be. And then the prop adapter here. And we'll just set this all aside for now. Okay, so those are the components. As you can see, low piece count, except for the wing. Of course, the wing. Let's open this thing up. It is, it seems big. But you're saying it's only a 1.1, 1 .1, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how big the last one was? I thought it was like 84 inches. It, or maybe yeah, it was 6. Or no, they offer an 84. But I don't think ours was. Ours was like 60 something. Because they have a bigger one too. If I remember right, it looks a lot like this one. Boy, there's one thing they know how to do at Horizon. They know how to pack stuff up. Tape. Which is great. For those of you that don't know this, I work for a company that sells packaging equipment, packaging and material handling. And uh, that's what I do for my day job. I work on industrial scales, but that's another division. So it makes me smile when I see lots of wasted packaging. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're like me, who a million years ago didn't know that that was an actual business. It, it is a business. <laughs> it's a very big business. It's a very big business. Huge, and I know business. <laughs> All right, here it is, guys. Oh, that looks that so, so cool. sweet. I love <laughs> it. That is really, that really cool. Really okay, so immediate thoughts of the wing before I get any further. There are splittable connectors between the full length ailerons, okay? So you can cut these and you can add another servo here. So you can have an outboard aileron. And just looking at this, we have A3, uh, 332s. Okay, so I don't know what that means, but it's just the model number. And then very thick wing, it looks really pretty. And then obviously in this configuration, you can set them up with flap rounds. So we have the left and the right here. Okay, so really nice tight wrap on there. And if you ever get a uh, wrap that has a little bit of a warp in it, you can heat it back up and it should pull it tight. So beautiful. And I could never get it to look this good myself. So I love that. Like the trim, looks really good. Love this. Super, super cool. cool. Okay, so I think we're just gonna take a second clean up and come right back. All right, so we got a crescent wrench. We've got some screwdrivers here, some more screwdrivers here. And we're gonna take a seat and put this thing together right now. So without further ado, we'll leave the wing off so it's a little easier to handle everything. And the instructions probably tell you to put the tail together first, and that would make sense. So I think we might start there. Alternatively, you could put the prop on, but they're definitely suggesting you start with the tail. So we're just gonna do that. So let's flip this upside down. I didn't show this earlier because I didn't know it earlier. You lift that off access to the AR631, which is pretty sweet, and the elevator in rudder servo. Okay, so we'll throw that back in there. Nice, big, easy access, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so the tail, the instruction manual shows how to do this. Covering on your model may develop wrinkles during shipping and will require the use of a heat gun or covering and covering glove. What? And covering glove or covering iron. Okay. So yeah, you see if you, you, if you had bubbles and ripples in here, you might need to take a little bit of warmth to it. I like to take this stuff out. If that happens, uh, you'll take it back. It's just gonna shrink it back. Don't try to do it with a lighter. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Okay, so it looks like we have to slide the 
tail wheel down to get this in. Or actually, no. Camera crew, we slide that one over. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so you guys see this? So in order to get this down, I think you have to undo this and then drop it down and then this opens up and it allows you to slide it in, okay? But just keeping in mind that your wing, uh, the horizontal stabilizer is gonna be held on by the same nuts, okay? So just kind of sliding this stuff out of the way. Looks like we've got our hardware in here. Okay. Just gonna dump that out real quick. So these are the nylocks, okay. And these are gonna be for the prop adapter. This will obviously be for the wing. And then what are these ones? You need some for gear. Oh, maybe these ones are for the gear. This must be for the prop adapter. Let's see which one fits through. Yeah, those ones must be for the prop adapter. Because I suspect, here, let's just go ahead and take this off while we're talking about it. Okay, so we'll undo that. You can definitely tell somebody's worked this a few times. Okay. Yours, of course, will be brand new. Sometimes the samples that we get early are, are quality control samples. So they've had a chance to play with the model and work out some of the bugs maybe sometimes. Okay, let's, let's actually just, I wanna just, I wanna answer my question about where the screws go by just putting this on. Okay, so this is gonna line up right there. Super simple. It actually holds itself on. Um, <clears throat> Phillips, China Phillips. Okay, so that's gonna go in here. I don't know if that's right. Oh yeah, that must not be right. That must not be right. You wanna know why? Why? Because I was looking at the manual. See, they show this. Mm -hmm. That's Phillips for the bottom. And then for this, for the prop adapter. Yep, the black ones. Okay, so they want these ones. Sorry guys, that was a bad guess. All right, so I need a two millimeter, it looks like, maybe. Nope, even bigger. 2.5 millimeter? Goodness gracious, mm. okay. So 2.5 millimeters, just gonna get the job done. Spin it until it lines up, and then it takes off and goes. Okay, okay. same thing here. We're gonna do this four times. We might as well just get this built because it's already right here. Okay. I just feel like sometimes with these models, there's never really a super obvious way to go, but usually putting the wings on is the last step because the wings are wide. Just makes everything in the way. Yeah. But with the prop, the way it is on this plane, you should be able to just turn it and it'll be out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. So guys, earlier we had a cat come up and try to attack our other cat, both of our cats. So they were having some fun outside. That's why we had paused earlier. So we <laughs> took the opportunity to pick up some of the garbage in the background. Yes. So it's always fun when these things happen. Now I see there's two extra washers, so those must go with the tail. See, process of elimination does work sometimes. Okay, so now the spinner, we're gonna take and disassemble the spinner by unscrewing the two Phillips screws. And we don't have any issues figuring out which one's which because they're already in there. But yours might actually come inside of a bag. So let's undo this. Oh, that one's not wanting to go because it's like not, not gonna work with that. Go to, I think they were showing something bigger than number four, but we'll see if that works. That one's not working. Do we have anything bigger than that? There's three. What about a plain old number two? I don't know. Let's just try a flat because I can't get this. I'm not getting good purchase. Yeah, got that one now. Okay. So this should be a pretty basic setup. That goes on there. There's a little bit of texture. Then this is gonna go back. Then the prop. This is gonna slide on. 
You see how there's like a little little piece there and then a screw hole there. That's to help you make alignment with this apparatus. So you know kind of roughly where to put the prop. Ouch. It's really sharp right there. Holy cow. I don't know if it got me or not. We'll find out. I need the washer and nut first. So it's going to go like that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So it's a pretty basic build. Shouldn't be too hard. I don't think you guys are going to need a lot of help with this. This is not a nylock, and this has also not got a lock washer on it. So I'm hoping that there's enough uh, bite from the teeth on the back side of the prop and on the teeth on the front and back side of the back side of the spinner to hold everything. Okay, so we're just going to torque this down. It's a pretty easy process, guys. I don't think anybody's going to have too much trouble with this plane getting it put together. And by the way, if you guys are new to the hobby and you're thinking, hey, is this a good first time plane? I don't know. Um, I think we'll reserve that until we, we fly it. My guess is it's probably going to be pretty intense, so probably not. Maybe a great first plane. Um, okay, so you see this screw is going to line up with that, so I didn't line up right. That's, I thought I had that lined up right, but I didn't. Okay, so we're just going to loosen this. Okay, once that's loosened, we can just kind of turn that until such a time as you see how these holes are opposite. The screw holes are opposite. It's kind of awkward because it's not like super obvious where it's supposed to go. But I think I got it now. And I say that, but I thought I had it before too. All right, so we've got that tight. put this together front half back half yep it passed through okay I'm just gonna use a flat bladed screwdriver because it's a lot easier to make purchase on that type of screw I do like the spinner it's pretty mm -hmm. it's simple nothing super amazing about it but it definitely does the job it looks like it's gonna be a good match on color Disappointed by that screw. I feel like that screw might have got a little bit stripped by the first person that screwed with it though So maybe yours is not gonna have that same dilemma But that's why I'm using a flat screwdriver if you ever run into a Phillips tip see sometimes you can't always pass a number two into these holes because it's just it's too thick And so if you use a thinner flat bladed precision screwdriver you can get in there and just use one of the two slots because it's a Phillips You've got the cross, you know, this will just just go into one side at a time. You can see I've closed that gap all the way around now. Okay, so we should be good to go there. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty basic stuff. Um, okay, cool. Uh, the next thing we need to do is put the tail on. That's what we were gonna do before, but I changed my mind. Um, what size do I need here, camera crew? I think that's, that's gotta be a one. Pretty small, yeah. 0.9, let's try 0.9 since I've got it. No, that's way too small. There's a three, there's a 1.5. Nope, there's another. There we go, that's what we needed. And that is a, what is that? I don't know what size say. that is. Maybe it's a one. So just slide that down, it allows this to come off. Okay, just spin it around all the way. And there's holes pre-drilled for you. It's a pretty basic, simple setup. Then you put this down. Now you don't need any glue or anything, which is nice to get this accomplished. I need this out of the way. Now you have to pay attention here because this is gonna be down and this is gonna be up. And you're like, well, why does the control horn go up? Well, it's just the way they designed this particular plane. Okay, so we're just sliding that into position. Let those bolts drop down, gentle pressure, walk that up into position. Once it's all the way up, then we can slide this up to receive it. Okay. Hmm. 
It's a simple setup, a lot easier than building that big one. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna flip the plane upside down, lay it down gently here, drop that down. And I'm gonna drop the other washer down. And we've got the two nylocks. Now these are nylocks, so you don't have to worry about them coming undone, generally speaking. Now we do have a nut driver here, I think, that should be able to do that. And I don't remember if that was a 5.5 millimeter or six. I think it was a six. Or oh, that's 2.5. Two, 5.5, one. Do we not have a six? Seven, maybe not. I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, 5.5 it is. I like that design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice when you have a nut driver. You do not want to over tighten these guys. You'll break your model. And then let's not forget that collar here after a minute too. Oh, right. And I'm going until it's torqued down. Yeah, that's probably about as tight as you can get it without breaking it. Now we'll slide this collar down. And just to make it look nice, I'm gonna go ahead and run yep. this in. Lined up with the stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer. All right, so pretty easy so far. Um, while we're upside down, why don't we go ahead and put the landing gear on? Okay. So this is a nice, feels like a powder coat finish. It's got a little teeny bit of give to it, which is nice. And then the squishier foam tires. I like those tires. I have, by the way, uh, manufacturers, if you're listening, I have no problem with tires that are made of foam. Some people have complained about it in the past. I don't care. I have zero problems with foam tires if they're soft foam. I want soft though. What is the complaint with them? I don't know, maybe they soak up water. Hmm. Maybe they get deflected over time when you have a model that sits on its own uh, landing gear. For a long time? Yeah. Hmm. That might be one complaint that some people have, have uh, levied against these style of wheels. Okay. Good. Good. And one last to tighten. Likes to slip on me. So I'm gonna go to a flat and see if I can get in there and just give it a little bit more tweak. A little bit more. This is just to get a little bit of torque on the very end of the throw. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so that is a pretty dang easy build so far. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, super, super easy. So now what I wanna do is I wanna look real quick inside before we get too far ahead of ourselves on how the ailerons and everything are gonna land. So I'm just gonna kinda put my screwdrivers back and just get them slid out of the way for now. We've got this one nylon um, thumb nut. And yes, this is actually attached. So you don't need a tool for this, but you can use a flat bladed screwdriver. Okay. So I'm gonna just, camera crew, if you'll slide that away from me, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. I'm just having visions of flopping it around and knocking it over. Yeah. Okay, so now in order to land our wires on the ailerons, we're gonna have to hook them to, to this. But that presupposes you're not gonna set up flaperons. Now this is a bind and fly model, so I would be super disappointed if this thing doesn't have flaperons set up by default. Because especially with a full length aileron like that, so I'm sort of torn here. Normally we would set up flaperons regardless of what the bind and fly does. So I think on this one, we're gonna go ahead and set it up with flaperons, right? Okay. Because okay. I mean, it's like, I, I don't wanna have a plane that's got a full length aileron and no flaps. Even if you don't need it, I want flaps for fun. So, all right, so that means that we're gonna have to reach our wire a little bit further than I think it's gonna reach now. So that means you'll, you're either gonna have to supplement this Y cable with an, another cable, or you're gonna have to replace that Y cable 
And I guess I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna come with your model. My guess is it probably won't, but we have quite a few cables that we've gotten over the years. Bind cable extensions are perfect for this length because you don't need very much to get where we need to go. So I'm just, you know, you got a Y cable that's hooked up right now and you, could, you can actually just use another Y cable that you've discarded from another plane. Um, or you can even take, if you're real anal retentive, you can take and pull this connector out by using an X-Acto knife to release these little plastic. You can pull that out, cut the wire, slide the connector back in, and then you can build another end. Or you can just use something like this, which would be like a bind extension cord. Okay, I'm just gonna dump out this bag of goodies. This is just stuff we've gotten recently from other different models. Here's another extension cord. Here's another extension cord. Just to give you an example, this one was for gear on a plane, okay? And here's quite a longer one. So depending on what we need for length, we should be able to accomplish our goals. Of course, you can buy these extension cords and things like this, um, or you can buy cable and make them, but it is kind of nice to know that that is an option. Um, that, of course, is not included in the model that I can say for sure. I don't think it is. And it's not impossible that they've included in yours that they didn't include in ours. So generally, they only include what comes with the model. All right. Oh, and then both. Also, look at that. That's, that's the same end. Okay. So we can't, we can't use that because that's not going to work. We'll have to go with uh, an extension cord with a male to female connector. All right, so in order to do that, and I'm just gonna jump right in, assuming we're gonna do flaperons. Okay. Okay. Because really, if you get in this plane and you're not doing flaperons, it's not very hard to set it up. So you can tell there's this ferrite core here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna lift it all the way out by unplugging all the cables. Nah, how about I show you the other way? See this? You can use your, your finger and just undo that. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to just take this and just throw it right into the, oh shoot, it went oh, in the garbage. Bummer. Oops. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> oh, looky there, what do we have? Okay. We have our Y cable, okay? So high quality Y cable. Okay, so we're gonna go, uh, the black is gonna go forward. So ailerons, Throttle, then aileron, then elevator, then rudder, I would assume. And then this one's probably gonna go to channel six because we're not gonna have gear. And I believe that's the way the assignment goes, but we'll find out here in a minute. Okay, so just pressing this down. This is an AR631. Um, there's also this programming cable here, if you guys can't see that. That you don't need to use for uh, the thrust reverse, I believe might also be commanded through that, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, the Avian ESCs are programmable through uh, the transmitter, which is pretty cool. So we'll show you how to set that up if it's available. Um, but I think our next move is to go ahead and start radio setup, which is kind of like we're in this hybrid space where we're getting ready for the radio setup, but we're not quite there. And I want to put the wing on, but really putting the wing on is a waste of time. So we're going to pause and we'll be right back. All right, so we need to mark the CG. They're saying from 70 to 90, but starting at 84. So whatever that means, it's supposed to be the center. So I'll go to 84, which must have been like the happy sweet spot that they found. So let's just measure and see where that is. Good Lord. It's like where the screw is. Oh. That's um, okay. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get my hand on the inside of that. So I'm just gonna make a mark right there and a mark right there. Okay. Oh, well. That's gonna be our CG, guys. Okay, so we'll see. I'm just gonna mark the CG as they indicated it, and then we'll we'll go plus or minus from that. Um, if you wanna measure it out, that's fine. But my experience on these planes is that you can fly them a little bit tail heavy or a little bit nose heavy. But if you're newer, then you wanna to tend to be a little bit more nose heavy. It's gonna be a more stable flying plane. And as you wanna get into more acrobatics and have a little bit more lively elevator, that's where you would do your, um, you know, your more tail heavy. Also, I'm just recognizing that we never actually set up the, um, you know, put in the control horns. Control horns. But I guess we kind of want to wait until we're done. Yeah, we usually it's just do. easier to do it at the end. Okay. So we'll come back to that. All right. So now, what's our next move? Our next move, of course, is radio setup. So our radio for this 
projects is going to be the NX10. So I'm going to get that fired on real quick here by pressing the power button. And we do have to off camera, click the cancel and back buttons and go to add new model. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. We're going to create an acro. So we should be safe to show from here on out. We just happen to have something that's not been released yet and this plane is going to go first. So our apologies. We don't mean to keep any secrets that we don't have to keep, but we do have to keep that one. <laughs> okay, so model select, that's where we just came from. Then model type, we just set that. Then model name, this is where you would type it. So we'll just scroll in the Ultra Stick 1.1 and come back. Okay, so we got the Ultra Stick 1.1 meter, okay? All right, then we're gonna go to aircraft type now. As per the manual, let's talk about this for a minute, okay? This is an E-Flight, so you can go over here, and you can go to this page here, and it's going to show you how to set it up. NX Series Setup. I don't know what all this crap is. This is different than what we're used to. So yeah, so we're just gonna we're just gonna basically do it the way we we know how to do, do it. Do. We're just gonna do like we usually do and totally disregard the manual. Okay. okay, so we're gonna go normal and we're gonna go to either flap run or dual aileron. Okay, now you can do normal if you're leaving your Y cable and you'll be perfectly fine. You're just not gonna have flaps, so you can ignore that part of our um, explanation. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go to flap run and I'm gonna go to select image. See if we got an ultra stick in here. I bet we do. Ooh. That might be the best. That's ooh, ooh, uh, 3D. So there's the whole lot of them, guys. So I'm gonna probably pick that one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go tail type is normal. And then we should be good to go. Then flight mode, I don't know if we need flight mode yet. We'll come back to that if we need it. Channel assign, <clears throat> I don't know yet on that either, but it does look like auxiliary three is the right knob, that's what we want. And what we're gonna do is hey, we'll walk back out and we'll see what we get. Okay, so now we're gonna go down to, did they talk about time or anything? Okay, so we're gonna just go in straight to dual rates and expo. We're gonna assign everything to switch F. We're gonna do our regular setup at five, 10, and 20. Now, if you've only got a two position switch, it sort of undermines my principle of doing the middle because you start here, and if you need more, you go to that, and it softens the stick and reduces the overall output, so it makes everything very soft. Or you can go here, and it gives you a little bit less expo, so it makes it more um, touchy. Okay. So it, the idea is to get back to the ground on a maiden. Okay. And that's what we do on this channel is we pretty much always doing brand new planes. And so as a result, we have to kind of edge our way to the highest likelihood of success. And that means that sometimes when we're flying planes, we're not familiar with, we have to be a little bit careful that we can give ourselves every opportunity to get back to the ground in one piece. And we still manage to crash stuff. But for you guys, it might be a little bit different scenario. You might have a little bit more experience, you might have a lot more experience, or you might have a lot less experience, and so then that is where it's really helpful to be able to follow along, okay? Now, if you don't understand what Expo does and you don't understand what rates are, there are two different things. Rates have to do with how far the controls move when you move the stick to the full position, okay? So this little chart shows you the output, okay? So I gotta use the rudder stick, though. Okay, so the rudder moves this way and then it moves that way. And you can see there's kind of like a little bit of a bell curve going on there, okay? Now, if I were to go to the higher rate, the higher amount of expo and the lower rate, you'll notice that that curve only goes to a maximum of output at minus 90. The input is minus 100. So at neutral, nothing is changed. And at the beginning, it's giving a little bit less even. That's called expo, it's exponential change. Okay, <clears throat> so that's gonna help soften the sticks in the middle so that if you have a tendency to move this 
left and right as you're using the throttle stick, it's gonna hide that from you a little bit, which is really nice. And it just happens to work really nice on ailerons and elevator, even though, so ailerons and elevator over here, even though you may or may not need it, especially with the stabilizer, Expo becomes less critical. All right, so now differential, we're not gonna mess with. I don't think you really need differential on this plane, but you could use differential if you're doing uh, flap rounds like we're setting up, okay? Now, the only thing different about flap rounds um, is that you're gonna basically have independent control of each servo, okay? So with differential, you need independent control of each servo. Throttle cut, we definitely want that on. We're gonna put it on switch H. We're gonna look down here real closely. Switch H, acknowledge that. And then you're gonna look down below and you're gonna see that it's working by moving the stick. Now you're gonna shut it off and now you're gonna see that it's working. Throttle is working, throttle cuts on and it's safer, okay? Now keep in mind, every safety feature you do on a plane is only gonna work as good as you use the safety feature. And also every safety feature on these planes is going to be subject to braking and not working if it's in, it's not correctly configured. Two, you didn't use it like we just talked about. Or three, something breaks. So always assume the worst until you've had a chance to vet a plane um, via a pre-flight inspection or just a, a, a brief look it over before you get ready to fly. But generally the idea is assume it's gonna hurt you until you've proven it won't, okay? That's a good idea, okay? So now, Throttle cut set, dual rates expo, all that stuff set. So let's set up the flap system. Flap system is gonna go to switch B in my case. Now, because we don't know how things are gonna go yet, we can't really set this. So I wanna just go a little bit up and just a little bit down. I don't know which direction it's gonna go. It doesn't matter. This is just a means to test. Okay, and then I'm gonna set the speed to, let's call it two seconds, okay? And we're gonna set elevator correction to nothing right now, okay? Generally, ele elevator correction on a full length flap is the same as you would do with a normal flap, but on an outboard flapper on, compared to an inboard flap, you're gonna have the inverse correction on the elevator. So if you're used to having a balloon from an inboard flap when you deploy, which has to be countered by elevator down to keep you going level, thus slowing the plane down, then when you deploy flap rounds, which are on the out portion of the wing, the outboard portion of the wing, then you're gonna have to actually, it'll actually make the plane go down. So you have to give upward elevator to correct and counteract that. Because this is a full length flap on, in my experience, we usually do it the same as an inboard flap. So we're gonna have a correction down or nothing. Just depends on the plane, depends on the airfoil, and it depends on the aerodynamic performance of the plane. So we may actually set no correction on this plane until we have a chance to fly it um, or just a little bit of correction down because that's what I think we're going to need. I have been wrong on that before. If you're in any doubt, just set nothing until you've had a chance to play with it. Okay. All right. So I've got, <clears throat> so this setting, I'm just going to set it to like 20 and this setting, I'm going to go minus 20. It's probably going to be wrong. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to set it to the middle setting so there's no ambiguity and we don't overdrive our servos and damage one, okay? So now at this point, we should be ready to bind. I'm going to clear my timer. Or actually, let's set up the timer too. Timer's probably not necessary on this plane. I think I'm going to go for seven minutes. Active. One out active, when I go over 25%, the threshold set there, it's gonna start the timer and count down. And then at one minute, it's gonna give us a voice update. At 20 seconds, nothing. At 10 seconds, it's gonna be a voice countdown. And then at expiration, it's gonna be tone and vibrate with the tone every minute thereafter. Okay, that's what we just set. Telemetry will auto-populate, and then we're ready to bind. So I'll just leave my menu right here. Throttle cuts on, we have to set up safe. AS3X, and well, AS3X should technically be set up already, but we'll have to set up the designation to turn on and off safe and possibly have an off mode in the middle. It just kind of depends on which switch we use. We don't have a retractable landing gear, so I'll probably use switch A for that. So we're gonna have AS3X on or safe on. Safe is gonna automatically level the plane. Uh, sensor assisted flight envelope is what safe stands for. AS three axis, artificial stabilization three axis. 
I get that right? Mm -hmm. You did. Okay, so as you can see, we're ready to kind of put things together. We don't have to actually have the wing on yet. Um, so why don't we go ahead and bind first? We can kind of control and protect ourselves a little bit easier that way. And then once we know that we can trust the electronic speed control and motor, then we'll go ahead and get these two attached and then we'll put on the wing. Okay. Okay, so the next step is to, of course, go in here and pull the Velcro apart, pull the power cord back from the ESC. And you won't have access to this when the wing's on, so I'm just doing it this first time to show you uh, how it's gonna work. So we'll drop this in there. That's a 100C pack. Uh, admittedly, that's a little bit bigger than what they call for in the manual. Uh, they call for a 50C, which just means that it's capable of a little bit more, a little bit more juicy performance. But that's okay, we're just setting this thing up right now. Also, be sure that you don't touch the output shaft of your motor in there, okay? You see the output shaft right there? You don't wanna have your wire rest on it. It'll catch it on fire, okay? Because it's a lot of friction, okay? I don't like the way that that's fitting at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna leave it out actually. Okay, now I'm probably not in bind mode and it didn't start, so I'm just gonna flip it up here and show you this. I'm gonna press this button. Okay, now we're in bind mode. Now just relax. Make sure you don't do anything stupid. Throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down, bind, select yes, bind, binding. Hold the plane just in case the throttle starts. Okay, now it's auto configuring the telemetry. Okay, now I'm gonna go throttle cut is off. Doesn't start on its own, that's good. Okay, we have forward thrust, throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down, we can now trust the plane. I'm gonna clear my timer, it never did start because I did go over 25%. Throttle cut is on and re-triple checked. Okay. Now that we're done with that, I can go ahead and take this and simulate the wing being on. Okay, so I've got it plugged in first. I don't like the way these wires are going by that, but at the same time, that's probably the way it needs to be. Okay. This, I've seen this from Hangar 9 before, but not from E-Flight. This strap is one of my least favorite straps in RC history. And I've now dropped the edge of the plane off. I'm just gonna actually do that on purpose this time. So it can't do that again. You see how it's wanting to slide back? That's really annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this down and then I'll pull this as tight as I can get it and it's just working really, really badly. See this? It just wants to slip down there because it's quite challenging to do all that at once, okay? So I'm gonna slide everything out of the way a little bit better. And I think what we're probably gonna do is there's a piece of Velcro in here, okay? So this Velcro is nice for people that use Velcro inside of their models. Now, some of you guys may have noticed, I don't generally use Velcro except for in certain circumstances. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this shelf liner and cut it off, okay? So shelf liner, meaning the stuff that you have in your shelves that stops stuff from slipping. And then I'm gonna go into my bag of leftover Velcro from other projects. And we're just gonna cut a little chunk that we can put onto that Velcro. And then later, if we decide we wanna change that out, we can do that at our convenience. So this is the hooky side. side. So I need to get something that's like the other side and then make sure it sticks first. Now you guys are beginning to understand. Yep, that'll work fine. Now you can understand why I didn't take the wing off yet. I'm actually gonna cut them this way, okay? And I'm gonna cut them just short. Okay. And then all that has to happen on this is we just have to peel and stick them in a couple of different spots, probably two of them. And that's gonna give us a little something to hold our batteries that don't have Velcro. Now, if you decide to use Velcro, um, then that's fine and it'll work just fine. It'll, it'll be a, a positive experience uh, until the next time you put it into any other plane, you'll immediately find out that you put it on the exactly the wrong side. And you're like, but Brian, I put it on the other side. You still put it on the wrong side. <laughs> Just take my word for it. It's the way it works. Just put it on all the sides. Yeah, if you put it on all the sides, you're going to cover up your label. And that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of doing that. So anyway, glad we got that out of the way. So now I'm going to drop this down so that this will act as a little bit of a brace to hold our battery. So it stops sliding out of here and really making me annoyed. 
Okay, so there we go. I'm just gonna see, I don't know how the CG is gonna work out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this down. And you know what, I'm just gonna just strap the whole dang thing in there, including the battery connector and everything, okay? So now even with that crappy contact, that plane is not gonna ever jar that hard. It might jar forward if you're crashing, but you know, at that point you're pretty much screwed anyway. Okay, so now we can put this uh, little cover on, which is nice They lighten it up with that. Just slide that forward. Now we're obviously free from the output shaft of the motor, so we don't have to worry about that. And we've got these two danglies that we plugged in earlier during the beginning of a radio setup. So now our next move is we gotta hook up the elevator and we gotta hook up the rudder. And in order to do that, it's pretty easy. We'll look at the manual. It's gonna tell us which hole to stick it in. Always refer to the manual to figure out where to stick it and what hole is preferred. If there isn't a manual for the device you're trying to stick it into, then ask questions. Oh, wasn't it? Hmm? Hmm? I thought it was on the next page. Oh, no, that's just no. it down. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna get there, guys. Flaps optional. Hmm, yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. It says to stick it in the outside hole. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so the outside hole it is, everybody. So we're gonna look at the tail of the aircraft here. We're just gonna take a look at the way this is laid out here. So we're gonna put this in the outside most hole. So this, is it's got a hex shape to it so you can use a little crescent wrench or something of the sort. And then this is gonna open up very heavy duty control horns. Ooh, that's close, close, close. Show the people from above, you might need to kinda of come right up here. You see that's that? That's really close. That is really close. I thought you were gonna be like in the middle. Um, you mean if I if I pull it in one turn like mm -hmm. I think it needs? Yeah. Okay, so I need to go sure. in one. I'm using three fingers to hold this. And that thing is not turning. Okay, so if you run into a circumstance where it won't turn for you without unspinning, keep in mind if you unspin it too hard, you're gonna unspin on the inside. So you may wanna get something to brace it. I try three fingers first. If that doesn't work, then I hang on to it like this. And I hold it with a death grip. Yep, that death grip was necessary. There's half a turn. Okay, oh, I need more. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, let's see how we line up now. Now in the outermost hole, That's pretty much perfect right there. I don't think we can get any better. I think you're right. I feel like you're halfway because weren't we that way before? Mm -hmm, just a tiny bit. Okay, so that's good enough for what we're gonna do. You're gonna have a couple clicks of trim on most planes anyway. So we'll just see which one it prefers. Okay, then just slide this fuel hose uh, down to the end and that'll hold it in place. And now your rudder and steerable tailwheel will move. So now kind of the same thing here. We're gonna go on the elevator now. So of course the elevator trims are centered. So you wanna go to the outermost hole as per the manual. And I don't like how that's at an angle. That's gonna create a little bit of a bind inside of there. So let's see how far off we are on our position first. Oh yeah, we gotta go a lot. No, we're actually about perfect. Okay, so because we're about perfect, I just have to take this, grab it hard right here, okay? And then I'm gonna just tweak it just a hair, okay? So just a hair, nope, I didn't get it. Be careful, you don't drop it on your covering, guys. That's still at a bit of an angle. Boy, I'm holding that thing so tight. Mm -hmm. You can tell. I don't understand why it just doesn't want to turn. 
So sometimes when they give you a lot of trouble like that, the next best thing is to grab a crescent wrench and you can secure the shaft and then put the crescent wrench on there. And this is a pretty big crescent wrench, so I don't know if it'll work, but we'll try it first. I don't think, I don't think you guys are gonna tend to have to make huge adjustments here. That's one of the reasons why we like working with E-Flight products. Okay, so now I'm just trying to go like this. It's not even gonna take hardly anything. But just remember, the more you get set up before you get out to the flight field, um, the easier your time is gonna be at the flight field, okay? So now I'm holding this with the lineman pliers. Oh yeah, there we go, perfect, got it. Got it, guys. And then let that through, perfect. Slide this back. That fuel tube is so strong. Holy cow. Oh yeah, yep. Looks mm. pretty dang good. Yeah, it's, it does. it's actually not perfect. It's really close though. And the coarseness of the thread is gonna not allow for much better adjustment. Not by, not by initial adjustment sake. Okay, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. Excellent. Okay, so now our next move is going to be to physically install the wing, which is gonna take like two seconds. Um, so in order to put this on, we obviously have these two wires now that have to get landed. And I, it'd be kind of nice to have the wires doing what they're supposed to be doing. So if this is my right aileron, then it needs to plug into one of these two. Okay, so let's find out which one's being called out as a right aileron. So I'm just looking in here and it says right aileron is on um, what would be port two, okay? okay? So let's look inside and verify. Port two, we use the white cable for, okay? So now I just need this to pass up. And I believe those are gonna need to plug in. Holy cow, that's gonna be a tight reach, hon. We need a longer Do we need a longer extension? extension? I don't know. Those are not very long. Those geez. are not long. We might need a longer extension, I wonder. I don't know, let's try it. Try it. Let's see how it goes. Kay. Okay, so we know we've got a right and a left. So this one here is the right one. Camera crew, hold that with one hand, okay? Just hold it so it doesn't tip. There okay. you go, okay. So now that, we can probably get it if we're careful. Okay. Okay, so we already know where the other one goes. Okay, so that's plugged in. And then this one is the left. Go ahead and let go, let go. Okay. So if you guys are having to take the wing off to transport, you won't want to probably do this step with flap on. So just use a longer extension. Okay, go ahead and hold it again. Got it. So you see what I've done here? I've, I've just got them so dang close to the right length. It's like almost no slack whatsoever. The brown is down in this case. You need a little tip towards you? No. Okay. Well, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right, so we've got those working. Now let go. Let's see if we have enough. You guys see what I'm talking about? I got like the exact amount. <laughs> yeah. See how close that is? Generally, you don't want to cut it that close, but it actually was perfect. Okay, well, right. that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna thumb nut this all the way down in. And we're just gonna hold the plane up so we can do it easily. And just go until this gets flush. Looks really clean, really nice. Wow. Okay, so now ailerons. Cool. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go into servo setup, travel, Reverse. So it looks like the right aileron, that right aileron is incorrect, right? No, the left aileron is incorrect. Wait, hold on. That should roll like this. So that's correct, this one's incorrect. So the left aileron will reverse. Okay, so that would roll us that way, that would roll us this way, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right, okay? So now take off flaps. Landing flaps. Okay, so now we can uh, establish our flaps. Okay, so let's go to flaps. I actually set that to zero, and you'll notice they're pretty dang perfect right here. And that side over there needs just a hair of an adjustment. Uh, yeah, just a touch. I'm sort of torn. Do we even mess with that? That's so minuscule. I know. 
Well, we'll show the people how to do it if they have to do it on theirs. This one, oh man, that is so dang close. Um, okay, so we'll do this just to show you how to do it, okay? So this thing's gonna pop out sideways. Then it's gonna go up. It's gonna get laid down. We're in one hole from the end, okay? So the second hole. Then we're gonna undo this. We're gonna actually, we need to go down just a hair, so I need to screw this in. And we're gonna see if we can get away with it. There's half and a full. Okay, so now we're gonna slide that in from the top. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Now, I don't know if the geometry is gonna be wrong because I'm on the bottom and the top. Ugh. So we're gonna go again, and guess what? We're probably gonna be wrong then. Probably gonna be too low. Oh, man. See what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. See if I tighten it in. Okay, now I'm gonna slide this back, the fuel tube. I'm gonna unclip this. I'm gonna slip it out from the end. I'm on the outside most hole. Now I'm gonna flip this around 90 degrees, slide it back through the hole, slide this back up. And then I can get the exact placement and the geometry right. There you go. Good and good. Okay, so now this thing, so it's got this little clip here, and it's got the hole here. The hole passes through on the top, and then rotates around and snaps. Boom. Simple. Okay, good. Now, from the end, you can see when we roll left, roll right. Okay, elevator up, elevator down, you all left, you all right. Okay, so everything in terms of like standard functioning control surfaces are done. Except for flaps. Okay, so we gotta do flaps. Okay, so we're gonna be going negative. So if you wanna experience full throw on these flaps, you'll have to recenter your ailerons. I'm not gonna do that. So you could actually have spoiler rounds too. So we'll set that like 39, and then we'll set this like almost 100. Let's try that. Okay, very good. Roll, roll. I'm listening very carefully. I want to make sure we're not overdriving the servos in anything. Yeah, we're okay at 100. Okay, so now that we're at minus 100, and just to be clear, you can get more deflection if you want. You just set this, instead of being zero, this would be set to something above zero, okay? And then you would just recenter your your arms. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So we've got takeoff flaps, we've got landing flaps, and we have ailerons, okay? Now, I don't, I don't typically go to 100% down on flap rons. I usually go to like, I mean, you can, but I think we should go like 85, and why don't we do like 35? So we've got takeoff flaps, and then landing flaps. Pretty cool. All right, so now that all that's done, we can scroll all the way to the right. And yep, so that's our entry point for the Smart ESC. So first things first, I wanna make sure we have safe and AS3X figured out, okay? So obviously, AS3X should be defaulted on, so throttle cuts off. <laughs> Holy cow, that's a lot of power. Throttle cuts on. It's working, and I can see it. Okay, now I'm using my right knob to see if it goes up or down. It doesn't, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna scroll down here to forward programming. Now it's gonna connect gyro settings for us, okay? So there's safe select. So you have to first turn safe select on, but you can see we don't have anything set for that yet, so it's not probably gonna work yet. Okay, so it's on channel two right now. I wanna to go to gear. So mode one is gonna put safe on. Nope, it's gonna put it off. Then that's gonna put safe on. 
So right here, this is on, this is off. I want to rotate that. Okay, so now the way to do that is to go up to the servo setup, travel, reverse. So now AS3X is on and now safe is on. So look, elevator up, AS3X, you're safe. Now watch the roll, more movement, less movement, okay? And you're like, but it's only moving that one and not this one. That's correct because this thing isn't defined. This thing is not set up with lap rounds, okay? So there is a special code that can sometimes be actually programmed in with the sticks to generate the correct output there. But the other way you can do it is you can factory reset your receiver to actually go through the first time programming. I wanna see if we can do that real quick. So we're gonna go down to uh, forward programming and just see if there's a way to factory reset stuff. I don't think you can without the programming tool. Gyro settings, save select. Hmm. I'm sort of torn too because when you have flap rons, you're going to lose AS3X and safe on one wing, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means that you only have one of the two redundant surfaces doing it. Okay, so where does that really get to be in a problem? Here's where it gets to be in a problem. With full landing flaps, I want to show you another thing. Look at this, more deflection versus less deflection. In AS3X you're fine, but in SAFE they have limited the output. See that? Mm -hmm. So if you were to put SAFE on and then put down the flaps, your plane is going to try to roll. And it's going to roll slowly to the right, okay? So now with AS3X on, you'll be fine with flaps. But as soon as you try to auto level, then I think it's gonna screw with you, okay? So I'm gonna shut flaps off. This is the easiest way to see. It's finding the quickest route level. Okay, now is the elevator. The elevator is trying to find level. The elevator is trying to find level. Okay, now the rudder is not gonna really do much of anything other than AS3X response. Okay, so now that we're in AS3X, I can wiggle it up and down. I can wiggle it forward and backward. I can wiggle it up and down and watch the aileron respond. And all I'm doing is looking down the length of the plane and I'm just moving the plane up and down. You can see up, it goes up, it goes down. I'm actually looking at the rudder, I should say, left and right, but here we go. So there's up, focus on the straight lines like the red at the top. And you can see, we'll go with the TV in the background. Now, same thing with the elevator. As we pivot, it's gonna go with the pivot. It's gonna go with the pivot. It's gonna go with the pivot. And same thing with the ailerons. We're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. We're gonna go up. And so really all we're doing is we're trying to emulate an environmental impact like flying along and then wind, okay? Or wind, or wind, or wind, or wind, or wind, or thermal, something like that. So it's gonna help you resist that. The other thing you can do is you place your hand on the plane and then roll and you can really feel it then, okay? Obviously there's no change on this side because AS3X is not gonna act on the other control surface. So our last setting to do before we would go through a full factory reset and I don't know, we might just leave it like this and see how it works. I am going to show you how to set up thrust reverse because let's see how we are working now. Throttle cuts off, there's throttle, nothing, nothing. I'm just double checking, we don't already have it set up. We don't, okay, so that's not unexpected. So now everybody listen. Thrust reverse is something that can get you in some trouble and it can also get you to where you cut yourself. So you gotta be careful if you use it and I'm trusting that it will be. Throttle cuts on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I have to reset the power so that I can get into that mode. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll all the way over and then we're gonna be ready for this menu, okay? So we have to now undo our Velcro. I'm gonna let this thing out actually just so it's a little easier on this step. 
Okay, unplug. Now replug. Now as this boots, you can see the dance is twice. Up elevator, left aileron. That's step one. <clears throat> okay, now right aileron. Up elevator, right aileron. aileron. Okay, great. So now we're going to go into the settings. So we are now in the setup for the Avian ESC, so we can we don't have to worry about the timing as much as we did before because you have to do that within so many seconds. The camera crew has put a bunch of tools on the other side, so I'm gonna have to be mindful of that. Okay, so the way you navigate this menu is you go up and down or left and right. See? Under brake, you wanna set that to reverse. Cool. Brake force, I have no idea. I just leave it at nothing. I'm sure some people are gonna not like that, but that's fine. Oh, actually, last time we did a plane, they had it in the manual. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they do in this one. I doubt they do. Hmm. Oh, by the way, does not work with bind and fly receiver programming. To use bind and fly receiver, it must be reset with a PC and blah, blah, blah. So we can do that after a minute. But I still wanna show the people how to do it and then you would just not be able to use safe with the full flap rounds, okay? Okay. Two 12 inch extensions if you wanna do flaps and ailerons, okay? Yeah, I don't see it in this one yet they show you how to do binding of course the binding is so easy anymore smart technology looks like this is all set control surface directions this is our dual rates and control throws they suggest different than what we do okay so we didn't talk about thrust reverse here so that's fine as usual, we will go ahead and supplement the manual for you here on Brian Phillips RC. All right, so if you want to help support us, buy the planes from the links. It's the easiest way. Okay. And then you just walk your way through. Mm -hmm. And then channel seven. Now, I don't want it on channel eight that'd be master gain and we might need that mm -hmm. okay so i don't know if i want to do i want to do it on g since this is a nx10 we can go to nine but actually can we go to nine we usually do eight nine looks like five through yeah so we're already using gear we're using flaps, so channel seven is actually fine. Mm -hmm. We just need to remember what we're doing when we set up our, our safe in AS3X later. Okay, so we'll go down to exit with save, and we'll exit with save. We're gonna let it boot. I have a hold of the wheel, just in case something goes horribly wrong, shouldn't. Okay, so now we're gonna test the, we're gonna scroll back over, test the throttle cuts working, throttle cuts off. Give it throttle, we can feel the throttles working. And we have braking, we can tell that's been activated. So now I can click and scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, go down to channel, assign. Auxiliary two is already set to B. We don't want that. We want that set to G, right over here, okay? Now why do we want that? Because we're gonna control thrust reverse with that and we already have B assigned to flaps, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna very carefully control the plane. Throttle cuts off. Forward thrust. Okay. And there's reverse thrust. Throttle cuts on. Okay. So now, in order to switch the positions on that, I wanna go to monitor mode. And you can see, right now on auxiliary two, we're at 100, and that's gonna yield Reverse thrust, okay. And then zero is gonna yield the same. And then all the way back, or minus 100, is gonna yield forward thrust, okay. So I'm gonna put my throttle cut back on for safety. 
and I want to make minus 100 up here, and I want to make this plus 100 and plus 100. And you're like, why would you do that? Because I want that to be forward thrust, and I want this to be reverse thrust controllable and reverse thrust controllable. And if this was an EDF jet, that'd be forward thrust, then reverse thrust, then pilot fatigue with reverse thrust, meaning it automatically assumes the top position for reverse thrust to make things easier on a fast landing. All right, so we don't do that with prop planes because it gets like potentially really dangerous, okay? So digital switch setup, select switch G. Now on this position, all the way forward, I wanna go minus 100. Okay, minus 100, then I want this one plus 100. Brian, why not zero? Because I don't want to be in the middle of the pulse width modulation range. I want it completely one way or completely the other. Okay, so now we'll test. Walking out of the menu, throttle cut's currently on. Throttle cut is now off. Plane secured, braced by my hand. Forward thrust, reverse thrust, and continuing to the top switch, reverse thrust. And of course, it's controllable. And very good. All right, so throttle cut's on and tested. We have ailerons going the right direction. We have elevator going the right direction. We have rudder going the right direction. So roll, roll. Elevator, elevator, yaw, yaw. Then we also have safe and AS3X turned on with the exception that if you're in safe, flaps would be somewhat of a misnomer. Now, if you're new to the hobby, come over here and you wanna use safe, but you'd like to have flapper ons, but you understand the drawbacks. Before going through a full reset of everything, one thing you might do, gosh, that's a lot of work just to get safe. Cause we already have AS3X on one. It's probably enough to do the job, but we're gonna set it up right. What I'm gonna do is I'll show you right now if you want the easy way out. One thing you can do is you can disqualify, you can disqualify this going into safe if the flaps are retracted, or excuse me, if the flaps are deployed, okay? So the other thing you could do is you could just stop the flaps from being deployed if this is true. Now, how do you do that? You would make a mix, okay? So if you want a mix, make a normal mix, and you would start with what condition you want to test. Um, we want something to impact something else. That's the input and that's what's gonna be impacted by the input. So in this case, I want my switch A, you have to scroll that in for whatever reason. I want switch A to impact switch B, okay? Or you could do flaps, but it's easier to do switch B, I think, in this case. Oh, we'll have to do flaps, okay. So in that case, I only want this to be true when switch A is on. And when it's off, I don't care, okay? On. Off, on, off. Somebody please answer for me what the heck the difference is in the curves. Oh, and by the way, if you ever get confused on a mix and you wanna start from scratch, go all the way to the bottom to reset. That's something we didn't have before, so it's really nice to have that. Okay, so switch A. Is going to impact flaps. Okay, so if you have flaps, switch A. Now I'm gonna scroll down here. I only want it to be true in this condition, but not this condition. Okay, so I'm gonna disqualify this condition. Now it's off, now it's on, okay? So when you have safe on, I want the flaps to be off, right? So that means I want flaps to be at a rate of, ooh. Let's see what happens when we turn flaps on. I don't know if this is gonna work the way I want it to. So I'll probably play with it a little bit until I see the condition correct. And I'm beginning to see, if I'm not 100% sure this is the way I wanna accomplish my goal. You know what, I'm gonna play with this and come right back. All right, so I figured out what I wanted to do. Flaps work as usual, I'm in AS3X, okay? Everything works as usual, okay? 
nothing special. Just the normal response you would expect from a normal plane. If you decide to go to safe, everything continues to work as a normal plane, but then if you try to deploy flaps, it disqualifies that position. Now remember, this is without reprogramming your receiver, okay? But you still want flap rounds. So safe is still gonna work, okay? And then looking at the elevator, it's still gonna try to level the plane, but you're only gonna have one aileron doing that work, okay? So this is without reprogramming your receiver. Right? So now, if you were to try to deploy flaps, nothing would happen, but you're in auto leveling mode. So as soon as you come out of that, it's gonna put it to regular flaps and AS3X, okay? Flap rounds and AS3X. Okay, so that's pretty simple. I'll show you how I did it. So within mix one, I selected flaps to left aileron. I scroll down and turn switch to A I disqualified that position, and then I qualified this position with undermining any sort of left aileron input, okay? It's kind of a weird way of doing it. I had to guess and check until I got there, but when you have the switch A on, it's gonna disqualify the function of the flaps, the function of the flapperons, okay? So now we have a regular function, we have a regular function, and then we have a regular function, and we have a regular function. So that stops the weird disparity in flap droop during save, okay? Because that's not acceptable. It just basically stops you from being able to do that. Okay, that's what you could do if you are a beginner. Of course, you have to make that weird mix, but that weird mix is what you need to make, right? So now the other option is, and the better option is to reprogram this receiver to factory defaults, and then you could set up, you could set up your own first time setup for AS3X function through forward programming, okay? So now normally on forward programming, it, it allows you to do all sorts of different setup that we don't see in a bind and fly basic, okay? But in our case, because we wanted flap rons, we're gonna show you how to do that. And so if you wanna just stay tuned, we'll show you that right now. So if you're gonna do this, you'll need the uh, Avian Spectrum Smart ESC Programmer V2. And you'll need some sort of a cable to go to the receiver. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Now, if you wanna energize this, you can energize it, I believe, from the model, or you can plug in um, a balance lead from one of your packs as well, which is the other way to do that. And you can energize it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use the power from the plane, I believe. So now on this one, I'm gonna flip the plane over. I'm just gonna lay it on its belly, make sure the prop is clear of everything, just in case all hell breaks loose and it decides to start running, that'd be bad. Okay, so now we have to go into the programming port here. Oh shoot, I need a mail to mail plug. <laughs> Sorry guys, I pointed out the wrong type of plug. Um, we just put all this stuff away here a few minutes ago. Sorry guys. I'll plug like this. I'm sorry, my bad. But this will go with my little extension cord just to make it easier. And we should be able to plug this in with the minus going toward the front of the plane in this case. Okay, so that's gonna bring up this information. Connecting to the ESC. And I honestly, it's been so long since I've done this, I can't even remember exactly how to do this. I might have to plug in a battery here to do it. Connecting ESC. Oh shoot, this is the ESC programmer. What am I doing? I need the one to redo the... Oh, the receiver. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, so we'll be right back, guys. All right, so this is the transmitter um, receiver USB programming cable, and it goes down to just a regular servo plug, as you can see, okay? So, looks like this, this doesn't, this isn't supported on Mac. And then they have a little adapter that comes with it, or I can't remember if this comes with it or if we had to. 
That's for an older model. Okay, so this one's the one that plugs in. There's also a Bluetooth one. I don't have the Bluetooth one that I know of. So I apologize. That's definitely for ESCs. I don't know what I was thinking. That was a big brain fart. So this is plugged into the model. The model's powered, throttle cuts on. Um, and if you're really in any doubt, you would bef you, you'd be best to just have the prop off at this point. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna register this product and I'll show you the applications you have to have. And we put this big long extension cord for our USB plug. You may not have one of those, but we just wanna use our desktop PCs to make it easy. And so we're gonna plug this in when we're ready. And that'll be a little easier for us to film because it's tight in our office. Um, okay, so now I'm trying to also figure out where the serial number is on the actual device. I believe it's actually listed on the side there, but it's just hard to see. And so we're gonna figure that out and come right back and tell you the next step. Okay, a few minutes later, we plugged in our little programmer to our extension cord. You may or may not need the extension cord, but then come with us to look this direction only. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at this on our computer. I made a shortcut here. This is the installation file that downloads. This is the help document that comes. Camera crew is gonna to go to the other side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this application. I haven't registered my product. She's gonna go back. She's gonna to try to make this so you can read. And what's gonna happen is you're not connected. We are connected here and we're just gonna connect. And this is where we're gonna get our serial number from. Okay. So then it comes up here, you can see the AR631 and you can go to edit and there's a serial number if you wanna write it down, but I'm not gonna write it down. I'm just gonna hit edit and then I'm gonna hit more, duplicate or you can go to software update and you can see you're running version 2.38 you need to log into Spectrum RC account and register this device to check for an update. So I can take this information and now I can copy it with just a control C and we're going to go over to Spectrum RC. So now I want to show you something guys. So we're going to pause for just a sec. Okay. So it did paste right in there. I just highlighted this data field and it started out blank and then I just control V. So control C, control C copy and then control V to paste. Okay. And of course we have all of our personal data up there, which we're not going to scroll over. And then you just do all this stuff. I don't even know what to put for half of this crap. And so we just put this on and then we hit register. So we're going to do that and I'll show you how to get to this stage after just a second, but we'll do that off camera for a second. Okay. So after a minute and retrying twice because of our Starlink, you can see we have this here and I named it, nicknamed it Ultra Stick Bind and Fly, even though it's not gonna be Bind and Fly here in a minute. Okay, so you can deregister, report, update, nickname, whatever, download updates. So in this case, I'm gonna download updates. So I'm gonna click on this, but we have to pause while we click in case it brings all my sensitive information again. All right, so none of the sensitive information came up, so I can just click the highest level. So this is 3, 38.5, 37.8. And we can go to our tool and see what we have. We have 2.38 already. So we don't actually need to update this. We just want to reset it. So because we already have the latest and greatest, which is right here. And you can tell because we're at 2.38 as opposed to 2.37. Now, just to show you how to do it, we'll go ahead and download it here. So I'm going to click download and we're going to pause. Okay, so we have it right here. That's what came from the website. That's what downloaded. So now I can bring back up my application here and I can choose a file, drag and drop. And it just started beeping. So, and you can see there's lots of like beeping going on. And as it beeps, I'm just gonna be here to secure this in case, like I said, all hell breaks loose. But just keep in mind, we are powering the device from the ESC, okay? It just flashed a couple of times at me. Okay. So since this hasn't taken off yet and flown across my living room, we're going to very carefully do this. Okay, it says the device was successfully updated. And we're gonna click now. And then it's gonna be selecting models. Now we're gonna go over here quickly and very carefully protect ourselves. Okay, so everything is rebooted. 
I'm just gonna grab this. Everything's already bound. Throttle cut is on. We are gonna quickly test that. It is working, that's good. Now I'm going to unplug and just wait a minute because we only updated the firmware. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be reset to factory defaults just quite yet. But I just wanna double check some things quick before we get too far ahead of ourselves. First things first, throttle cut is off. We have throttle. We have throttle cut and we have a test. AS3X is working. Flaps are working. My mix to, el to eliminate that is working. So the only thing that's not working right now, I believe is our AS3X and safe select choice because we would have to reestablish that. Even though everything else is working, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. Okay, so now throttle cuts on. I'm gonna go back into system setup and I'm gonna scroll down to, I'm gonna clear my timer. And I'm gonna scroll down to forward programming, gyro settings and other settings. You guys don't remember seeing that, do you? Factory reset. Pretty cool, right? Or we go to gyro settings, AS3X settings, AS3X gains. Look at all that fancy dance. Mode one, mode two, okay. So now you can actually see what was in the bind and fly profile if you want, okay? And there they are. In fact, we'll probably pause and write that down. So AS3X gains. This is the bind and fly AS3X gains. So it'd be roll is 14%. Pitch is 56, and then yaw is 47%, okay? And that's the default stuff. So I only wanna write down that because that might get reset when we go. And then let's look at priority as well, okay? So that's already set to 160, and it's not gonna switch, okay? All right, and then the next thing is safe select which is currently technically on. When gear is up, okay. So that's pretty cool. So with this update to basically with our little firmware updater, we're able to see more than we had before. And then we can go to other settings too, which is factory reset, okay. So you could factory reset it here or you can plug it in. And I think what we're gonna do is at this point, we'll probably factory reset here, but I wanna show you some more stuff on the computer, so we're gonna pause and do that. Okay, so we're done with this application. Of course, you have to download this, and then we have a guide. The guide is this guide here, okay? So it just shows you the instructions and all that good stuff. So we'll close that, and we downloaded that from, I'll just show you in order, right here. This is, the this is what we're gonna link to, so you can buy one if you want it the SPMA 3060, okay? So we'll link to that. And then what's gonna happen is you'll basically go over to spectrumrc.com and then you will click on this and you can get all the information or you can click on this down here, the PC download, which is gonna divert you over there. And then this takes you to the same place, okay? So if you were to click on this, I'll open this in a new tab you can see it's right there. So it just shows you this, and you wanna download the latest and greatest. I was at like 3.4 before, so I just downloaded that today. And then by the way, the first time you plug it in, whether it's through an extension cord or directly to the device, you're gonna have like a long time when Windows is learning um, the driver settings, okay? So it's gonna auto set that based on what you download, which is part of this spectrum dash programmer dash 3.600 exe and you may actually find that that in your case is higher if you're watching this video after around april um, of 2023 it might be later on okay but that's how that works it's 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 a process of back and forth you do have to use quite a bit on the computer and then you have to be able to log into my spectrum which is up here 
and you click on that, then it's gonna ask you if you wanna go to another website, and I might pause for just a second. So once you're into the myspectrum.com, then you'll click on product reg registration, and then like all my personal information's up there, so of course we can't really show that on this video, and then later on you'll see more information down below, and you can just start the process of getting that thing online so that you can download the application. It's kind of a pain, and to be honest, the easier way is to just install the software that you would download, which is this program, get that running, which is gonna open up and look like this. And it's just like, this is just generic with nothing hooked up. And then you're gonna basically set up by plugging it in. And then once you get connected, then you're gonna get the necessary data that you need, which basically is the serial number. Because you can't always see the serial number as they're mounted in the planes. And no, you don't have to cut your receiver out to do that. So I'm just gonna unplug, and you can hear that it is now disconnected from Windows. So we'll pick this back up out there. All right, so the camera crew is gonna come back around, and we're gonna finish this up. Now, the other thing too is, I'm just seeing restore from backup, save to backup, initiate receiver bind mode. Okay, so we don't wanna mess with that. We basically have to factory reset to get what we want. And what do we want? We want flaperons, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, all this work for flaperons. That's right. If you want to do it correctly and you want to have full functioning flaperons and you want to have safe on both sides, this is the nature of the beast. Now, that all being understood, and that is a big, that is a big amount of effort to do this. The easier way to set this up is probably to buy two uh, servos and install them, you can see inside the wing for God's sake, mm -hmm. then you would just run that wire back to the Y that's provided, and then those two would go through a separate Y, and you would set that up on channel six. There's no changes to programming necessary because flaps are not affected by AS3X or safe. But if you want flapperons, that's all the work. Now, why isn't that set up by E-Flight? I don't know, that's a great question for E-Flight, so I'll let you guys ask that. But for now, what we're gonna do is we are going to continue by going through a factory reset. Now, this is where we're gonna de-latch potentially from the receiver. And so you need to be prepared that something might go wrong. And then also, for those of you that have already watched this whole setup, if you're not doing flap rounds and you're just hooking up the Y cable, you're already done. You have everything you needed. You don't even need to program in that mix that we built to disable safe, uh, or excuse me, to disable flaps when safe is on. You don't need any of that. You just Skip that step. So this is basically for those of you that want to really do it right and get, get things set up so you have full function of all the goodies. Also, this will be helpful for those of you who want to upgrade a previously used bind and fly basic plane that has the AR-631 or the AR-637 or 8236. Um, and you can go in and you can factory reset even though it was sold as a bind and fly. That's why this is so powerful. And that's why we're going through the trouble because it is something that's challenging to do. It's a lot of steps. It's not as bad when you're not filming it because part of the problem I have is that we're going back and forth and also we have lots of like personal data and information and passwords and things like that have to be entered. So it's really awkward to do that in a public setting uh, with my real information. So for you guys, it's not gonna be as complicated or if you got a laptop at the flying field then it's no big deal. So. I'm gonna go ahead and click factory reset. This will reset the configuration to factory defaults apply. Camera crew is gonna move her elbow so that I can be prepared. This is where you wanna be ready to go. I haven't heard a full reset, so that's good. Still, we are in command and control. As you can see, we have the incorrect controls now. That's what we expected. Now I'm gonna to go to gyro settings. First time setup, we're not doing any of that yet. Why? Because, get, get this. That's not right, you don't want that set up yet. You don't want that right, that's wrong. You don't want that right, that's wrong. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is scroll over and see if you're still in the right mode. Yes, you are, okay. So I'm gonna go to servo setup, I'm gonna go to travel, reverse. We're gonna reverse whichever one's going the right way or whichever is going the wrong way. So this one is going the right way, okay? That one's going the right, that one's going the wrong way, which is the right aileron, okay? So I'm gonna go to right aileron and reverse it. Look at that, roll, roll. Interestingly, it's the opposite of what we did before. Yep. Elevator, correct, correct. Yaw, incorrect. So we're gonna go to rudder and reverse. 
Rider, Rider. Elevator, elevator. Roll left, roll right. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Hey, look at that, at least that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we have the control surfaces going the right way, we're gonna also, real quick, throttle cuts off, forward thrust, reverse thrust, and reverse thrust. And you're like, but Brian, I thought you reset all that stuff. Well, just because I tried to juke you out with this thing, <laughs> I didn't actually reset anything because there's a whole process you have to go through to change the avian setup, but we don't need to do that because we can use the GUI that is actually through serial communication inside of all that smart technology, okay? So getting back to the point, we don't have to redo any of the thrust reverse. We don't have to do the anything on the digital switches with the exception of our mix that will disallow safe from working fully now. And so we're gonna actually undo that right now. So click function list, go down to mixing. We're gonna delete this by scrolling all the way down to reset and confirming. Now it's reset. Now, watch what happens when I try to use safe. Throttle cuts on. Elevator, in the round, rudder, nothing. Nothing. It's like it never happened. That's what we want. Okay, also, I'm gonna click and go into dual rates and expo, whoops. And look, all that's set already too. So we don't have to mess with that because that's on this side of the transaction, not that side. Mm -hmm. This has some, this has some. The stuff that's housed here impacts the way that this stick input looks to that. AS3X listens to you and responds accordingly to the environmental impact versus your impact. Okay. All right, so now the throttle cut, we already know that's working, we're good. And then we're gonna go down to flap system and just make sure we're still comfortable. We are, we haven't set up an elevator cushion, but it doesn't really matter. Um, at this point, I'm not sure we're gonna need a lot, but let's go ahead and set up what we think we need. Uh, I think we'll do, let's do nine and six. Six and nine, hmm. Okay, so this is down. That's what I think we need. Okay. Well, that's weird, look at that. Oh, okay. All right, so then mixing, we're not messing with any mixing, it's all off. The timer was already set with a seven minute countdown. So as you guys are seeing, everything that got reset in there was just the as and safe settings, which is kind of nice. Okay, now we can go down to forward programming. We can connect. Takes a second sometimes. Gyro settings. First time setup. This is going to learn settings. Okay. Oh, crap. You know what we need? Hmm. We need flight mode. I just oh, realized we yeah, never we set up a flight mode. Yeah. So system setup, disconnect to RF, scroll down to F mode setup. I'm gonna choose the gear switch like we did before. Next, okay. Spoken flight mode, this is where I'm gonna set up. Um, this is where safe is gonna be. Whoops, so cancel, cancel, clears it. Then I'll type in the word say, or excuse me, this is actually AS3X. I wanna AS3X when this switch is back here. Okay, so we'll go like this, AS3X and come right back. So AS3X, and then we're gonna make a spoken event that's gonna happen. And we'll come right back when we get down and scroll to it. So we're all the way down here, AS3X. AS3X mode. Okay, then flight mode two. Remember, this is just a name we're setting up right now. We're gonna type it in after we cancel, cancel, and it clears. Now I can type safe for sensor assisted flight envelope. Okay, so it says safe. That's what's gonna display on the screen about here when we go into the regular flight mode. Now I'm gonna change the audio vent. We gotta scroll all the way down here again. There's safe, okay. Now keep in mind, that's just a label. I could have it say, you smell bad, you smell worse. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything in terms of configuration. It's just a label. Okay, so now when we get back to it, we're gonna do that a little bit later. Switch G is still assigned to aux two, which is channel seven, so keep that in mind, guys. Auxiliary, nothing. Gear, channel five is what's gonna control what mode we're in, okay? And then we have auxiliary three is still the right knob for master gains, okay? So now we can go into regular function list, and we can go down to forward programming. Gyro settings, first time setup. 
Make sure the model has been configured, including wing type, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so set orientation manually, or we can continue. Set the model on its nose and press continue. Okay, so I'm gonna set the model on its nose and I'm gonna click continue, okay? Look at that, orientation seven. So what that tells me is if you're looking from above, you would see the CE on the bottom, okay? Now, I don't know what it looks like on the bottom of this receiver, but I would assume since this is sticking out this way, and it looks like that's where things would go. The drawing could be a little bit more helpful from the bottom upside, upside down, down to you, but that is correct. Now, I also wanna make an apparatus that will allow me to set this thing up on end like this. So I guess I'm gonna use this handy dandy battery because that actually worked out pretty close pretty to perfect. Close. Uh, I need to go just a little bit more. So I'm gonna shim it with this lid. Okay, so now the next step, that's pretty dang close. All right, so then we're gonna continue. Gain channel is set. I'm gonna highlight this and just scroll into right now, because that's what I want. I'm gonna apply those changes, listen for the beeps. Now, if you guys remember our Ultra Stick from Hangar 9 hopped on us at this point <laughs> because the receiver booted and then it jumped forward a little bit, okay? So we're good, so now we can go back into forward programming. Remember, this is for the gyro setting still. AS3X settings, look at that, looks familiar. It's like a regular plug and fly plane now. AS3X settings, F mode settings. So now we need to set up flight mode. FM channel is gonna be set by gear. That's what we're gonna control. And it's also gonna jabber while we do it, but that has nothing to do with forward programming. That has to do with our audio event where you could have said, you stink, you stink more. Okay, so now AS3X is active. AS3X is still active, okay? So now we're gonna go to system setup, first time safe setup. Let's verify. Yep, looks good to me. Continue. I want safe on in this mode. Watch this. Level model and capture attitude. Why did we put the battery under there? Hmm? So that it's level. So it could automatically capture its level attitude, okay? Now, you may also notice that this is at zero and zero. And you're like, how can that be? Because the receiver is mounted flat along the axis of the plane, okay? So now, if you want to make an adjustment, you can make an adjustment. It tells you down here, positive or negative, okay? So like if you wanted the nose to go down a little bit more, you could go like this. That'd be down one, one factor, okay? or up one factor. I don't know if it's degrees. All right, so now we're in. So I want safe mode on with self level and angle demand. See? How do you know it's working? Cause it's flipping here. Okay. And then we're just gonna apply. You notice it's rebooting now. One dance, two dances, and they all dance, people. This is what we were working for, <laughs> is the left aileron working with the right, or in your case, you might have flipped and done the other one. Uh, but either way, now we have, walking out of the menu, we have elevator, up, down, roll left, roll right, and you'll notice they're not moving very far because we're in safe, watch, is 3X. Safe, Asterix, big roll, big roll, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. I can probably take the battery out of the support under the back now. And when I go to flaps, watch this, safe is on, take off flaps and landing flaps. And we're still functioning as well as with throttle cut on, even with flaps deployed, it's still gonna attempt to level the aircraft and you can see the elevator is trying to level the aircraft and you can see it's trying to level the aircraft now it's not trying to level it i'm in as3x but here's the other thing watch the gain is all the way up there is no as3x what have we done wrong i'll show you we haven't actually done anything wrong it just hasn't been turned on yet and i'll show you how to do it now 
So coming back over, so safe is working, but AS3X isn't working. Why is that? Flaps are off, by the way. Oh, because we haven't given it 25%. Let's try that first. If that doesn't work, I have another test. Okay, throttle cuts back on. It is working, okay? So how do you test? Oh yeah, it's going that way. 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 Oh yeah, it's going up. Oh yeah, it's going down. Remember, you have to test all the different modes because we have two independent ailerons now. Up, down, yep. Now, watch this. Master gain, down. Master gain, up, okay? You're like, but Brian, I still can't see the difference. Come on over, I'll show you how to, I'll show you how to see it. Go down to the uh, forward programming, go into the menu, gyro settings, AS3X settings, 1X, let's go to four, watch this, okay? Look at this, all the way towards you, all the way away, see that, all the way that way, all the way, can you see it? Going You're that way? To... How about this? I'm gonna go up. Okay. Yep. Down. Yep. Okay, now watch the elevator. Up, down. Pretty obvious. Now watch the aileron. This one's gonna go up. Up, down. Yeah. Okay? Watch that aileron. Up, down, up. Now watch this. Take off flaps, lining flaps. Up, down, up, down. Watch the elevator. Up, down. Watch the rudder. I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see. Up, down. See how sweet that is, guys? That's on four X. All the way down, all the way up. Look how much of a deflection you have now, okay? So with all that working, also in safe, it works. And also with flaps off, it works. And also with flaps and AS3X off and safe on, excuse me, with safe on or off, the deflection. Do you guys see that? It's a self-induced oscillation. Why? Because the rudder is attached to the tail wheel, which means a lot of times you'll get that when your gains are too strong. Okay, so what have we learned? 4X is probably more than we need. My goal is that when my gain is about 50%, I'm happy, okay? Right now that's at 50, that's at 100, that's at zero, okay? I want it to be about the middle because then when I'm using another model, it ends up being about right when it's another plug and fly. But if it's super windy, you kick it up a little bit. If it's super calm, you don't need as much, you can kick it down and still get that rock solid performance, okay? So 4X is probably too much, but it's good for visibility. So I'm gonna put it back to 1X. And then you can go in here and you can fix your adjustable gains. If you go into AS3X gains, you can see that they're all set to certain values, okay? You can change them here. You remember these? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that being what they actually had in there. It's a big change. Yeah. So I'm gonna just set them 14, 56, and 47. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Now we're starting from the master gains that would have come out of the box in a bind and fly, and I'm at 50%. I can multiply it more, I can reduce it more. So now we have, what do we have? We have AS3X, we have safe, we have elevator, we have rudder. Did you do that? No, I bumped it, I'm sorry. I was like, how did it go forward? I'm so confused. Okay, so we have everything working in the correct direction. We have takeoff flaps, we have landing flaps. We have stabilization on and off, excuse me, stabilizer on all the time as AS3X is always on or safe. And then we also have Thrust reverse, which we haven't tested yet since we've done all this good stuff. There's thrust reverse, everything's working. This thing is literally ready to fly. And all that took us was a couple hours of suffering and pain <laughs> to add one simple feature that could have been added by the factory. Thanks factory. Um, anyway, so if you guys are watching from the factory, uh, please 
don't make us do that. It's not very fun and people don't like to do that and it's really not that big a deal. You don't have to have flap rounds plugged in. You can plug into one of those outputs and it'd be super easy. So anyway, guys, if you're listening, uh, pretty much at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal to have to do that. At least we can do it. And that is very good. We used to not be able to do that. Right. And it used to really irritate me. Yep. Also, we haven't talked about the CG since we got everything hooked up. So we're gonna go ahead and put our fingers on the spot, the special spot, which to be honest, it's really hard to do that because there's no cover, that all it is is covering, guys. There's like literally only covering on that spot. But look at that. That's <laughs> pretty dang good. Pretty good. So, 4S 2200, 100C is what we happen to put in here right now. It's like a beautiful violin. <laughs> so if you guys have questions, hopefully there's none left because we will have answered them all in this video. But again, the programming cable is required if you want to take your plane from, you don't need the extension cord. The extension cord is, is optional. And look what just happened. Oh. Is so ridiculous. Okay, so obviously I'm gonna be doing a little bit of work now <laughs> so I can get that back in there. Maybe hold on to your programmer. Yeah, don't you always say, don't drink it by the wires? So we'll figure that out. But anyway, the extension cord, that's optional. That's strictly just by choice. But we hope we answered all your questions and more here on Brian Phillips RC. If we've helped you even in the slightest, would you please do us a huge favor? And when you decide to buy, this amazing ultra stick, or maybe even the bigger ultra stick that we did from Hager 9, or another more amazing plane, or whatever, or something you like better than this even, buy from our links and you'll be helping to support us financially. Also smash the like button, and that will help us to get recommendations on YouTube, because obviously you like the footage, you got answers to your question, even though it took longer than you thought, it took us longer than we thought. And uh, at the end of the day, we're here to help support the hobby, in as many different ways as we can, not the least of which is telling you about the latest and greatest stuff that's coming out. But really at the end of the day, the thing we bring that the other guys don't bring is the ability to go through the entire setup, start to finish. I'm not sure how some of these guys set their stuff up because I haven't seen them do it, most of them. Uh, but they must have somebody that does it or maybe they sit in the back and watch the Brian Phillips RC video. I'm not sure how they do it, <laughs> but the thing is they do it. And so we're super excited to be one of the people doing it for you. And we hope that you guys enjoyed this video the Ultra Stick 1.1 with a beautiful belly from E-Flight, which is different. And we're super excited to be bringing this to you. I can't wait to get it up in the air and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. We have been a little bit slow with that, so our apologies. Speaking of speedier ways to get a hold of us, Patreon is one of the ways where you can get a hold of us a little bit easier because of the way that the comments show up. So if you wanna become a Patreon and support us monthly financially, there's a link down below. There's also PayPal for one-time gifts if you can't buy the planes, which first of all, it's the best way. You help support us, you don't pay for it, they pay for it. You help to support them by selling the products that they wanna sell and everybody wins because we get a chance to elaborate on how good or how bad, to be frank, a plane really is. So obviously, this plane looks pretty good. It, it feels pretty good. It's not a super hard build, but good Lord, it was a lot of setup for just one feature that I just wanted. That. Yeah. Also, I might just add, even though it was annoying, it still did work at the end of the day, which is good, uh, but it's still annoying and we shouldn't have to do that, if you ask me, not in today's day and age. Um, or inboard flaps, I think, uh, I'm not sure. I would have probably been fine with inboard flaps, to be honest. I don't really like flap rounds compared to flaps, right? Right. So you anyway, know. like like I said, support us, support them, support yourself, support the hobby. The best way to do that is to buy the stuff from the links in the video description below. The plane, the battery, the receiver, if it's you know a plug and fly, the transmitter, maybe a charger once in a while, that sort of thing. That's how you help support us. And uh, really, if you want to help support us another way, you could smash a like button already if you haven't already done that. Uh, click the bell for notifications and click all. And then of course, uh, subscribe. Those are easy ways to do it. Doesn't cost you a penny. And then you can be part of the team. Also, we have super thanks. Thank you guys. If you're saying super thanks, we really super appreciate it. Uh, I think we're up to like four or five of those things now, which is pretty cool. It's, pretty it's cool. always exciting. Yeah. So we appreciate that. And, uh, but at the end of the day, we would rather you guys take those 50 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is, 
and buy an amazing plane and get in the air flying because that's really what we want you to be doing. Uh, but we get that some of you guys don't want to buy a plane right this second because your wife has already threatened to leave you uh, if you buy another plane this month. It's a new month. So we could always ship it to the neighbor's house. Just saying, just, you know, like go over and hang out with the neighbor. Are we going back to the tell her there's snakes in the basement and then she won't Snakes in the basement. This is another good trick. I've heard that one a few times. Fortunately, it doesn't work around here because, you know. Our planes aren't, our in, planes the, aren't in the basement our, yeah. anymore. They're also in the basement is they're the correct way to put it. Spilling over. So anyway, if she's starting to leave you, then you may want to just uh, ship it to the neighbor's house or maybe ship it to work and, you know, do it that way. It'd be the safe way to do it. Um, but, but other than that, if you want to support us the other ways, we appreciate it. We still just want you guys flying. If you're brand new to the hobby, don't start with a plane like this. It's probably a little bit more than you realize in terms of skill and complexity. But, you know, could it be a first plane? I don't know. I mean, if you've got experience, you come back to the hobby. Mm -hmm. I don't see there's any reason why not. Uh, but there's a lot of foamies that might be a better option, I think, for a beginner. Uh, even though this might really trip your trigger and it might be more like, hey, I remember back in the day when I was doing control line and I couldn't get a plane half as cool as that. We understand. And so you would be one of those that's returning to the hobby. But remember, you're flying on a, a, a four channel plus, you know, setup. It's, it's different than control line. It's going to require different skills, different muscle memory. Uh, so if you want to get a simulator, we got simulators linked in the description below. And if you want to find something else that we've done, but you can't find it in YouTube, first of all, click on my face. Looks like a baby face from like 20 years ago. Click on that. It'll bring you to our channel. I'll probably have some like airliner flying in the background. Um, click on the little search bar there and you can search just our channel. And we have literally thousands of videos. If you still can't find it, scroll over to brianphillipsrc.com, www.brianphillipsrc.com. And you can find different ways to sort through the plethora of planes we've done. We'll also have links to purchase there, but really at the end of the day, we're just trying to help you guys navigate to the footage that we filmed so that you can get the answers to your questions. And then when you have decided that you really like something enough to buy, then you can buy from the links. And that's what we ask from you. Also, if you need links to things that we use in the videos, a lot of times people are like, I need the manual. We mentioned this earlier in the video, just click on the plane, scroll down a little bit, you'll see the manual. Sometimes within the manual, there's other links to other manuals, and then those manuals link you to other manuals. And yes, that really does happen because we looked at like five manuals today. Yep. It's a pain. But that's why you watch Brian Phillips RC, so you can let me do the hard work, and then you can just copy the things. And all you have to do is just sit there and relax and possibly enjoy an adult beverage or six or seven, depending on how long the video is. That's all you get today. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC.